Pastor Mike here, Friday evening for Harvest Family Fellowship. Excuse me while I get to the to the passage of scripture that we're going to cover tonight. Um, if you do have your Bibles uh, and you're listening tonight, we're going to be in Matthew or excuse me, Mark, chapter twelve. Um, excuse me while I find that. Okay. So, again, it's Pastor Mike here. It's Friday evening, 8 o'clock. <clears throat> um, we're going to be talking tonight about a myth that is kind of a, a, t a touchy subject for a lot of people. Something that, um, you know, pastors don't like to talk about. And that's the subject of money and tithes and offerings. And um, so, um, you know, the myth is, of course, that um, that we, uh, hi Beth, hi Lori, that we must tithe, that we're required uh, in the new covenant of, of grace and mercy and forgiveness that we're required to tithe. And um, before we talk about that myth and get into our scripture, I just want to say, that anything I say tonight uh, is not me trying to say that people shouldn't give to their local church. Um, it's not me trying to say that giving 10% is, is wrong or bad um, or anything like that. Um, and it's definitely not trying to say, please give our church money um, because I don't... Um, uh, to get rich off of doing God's work. I don't. Um, I mean, I know that. Um, having said that, um, you know, it's a, just a reality that churches require, um, you know, donations or tithes or, or offerings, whatever you want to call it, from people to operate. That's just the reality of it. Um, and so, you know, in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, uh, you know, it was a requirement uh, to, to tithe. Um, in fact, the Pharisees, uh, the Sadducees, the priests, you know, the, 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 the rulers and the leaders, uh, the religious leaders of, of the Jews would tithe, I mean, everything. The, the, the herbs from their garden, they would even give 10% of. I mean, they were just very legalistic about giving 10% of everything that they had. And... Um, but that's the old covenant. We live under a new covenant of grace and mercy and love and forgiveness. And uh, I, I, I personally do not believe that we're required to tithe. Um, and in fact, what I do believe is that God actually requires a greater sacrifice, a greater commitment from us. And I don't mean when I say a greater commitment or sacrifice from us uh, as far as our money is concerned. I don't mean that he requires us to give 15% or 20%, I simply mean that what he desires is for us to give of ourselves in a way uh, that that costs us something and causes us to have to rely on him uh, more. And so tonight I want to take a look at a couple passages. Um, first, I want to take a look actually at, at Mark chapter 10. Um, and we what we see in Mark chapter 10 is is a rich young ruler comes to Jesus. And I'll just read you this, this passage here. It's found um, in Mark chapter 10, starting at verse 17. And it says this, As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. He said, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this, man, at this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Um, 
Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed, and they said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. And then Peter spoke up, We have left everything to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, No one who has left home or brother or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me in the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age, homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children and fields, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Um, and that's a really, it's a really great passage of scripture. And there's a lot of go, a lot of stuff going on there. I preached a sermon a few weeks ago, and I touched on this, you know, uh, about storing up treasures in heaven. Uh, but what I want to focus on tonight is, is the fact that what Jesus was trying to set, t tell this man wasn't. Jesus wasn't saying that every Christian who wants to be righteous should sell everything they have and give it all to the poor. He wasn't saying that. Um, what he was what he was saying is that we need to let go of the stuff that we rely on and makes us feel a sense of security and instead rely on him for our needs. You know, um, you know, he told this rich young ruler to sell everything he had, but he doesn't ask every believer to sell everything they own. But what he does ask is for us to completely rely on him uh, for our every need. Okay? He wants us to put our faith in what he can do rather than what we can do, if that makes sense. And, and you know, the disciples, of course, asked him, you know, who could be saved? And Jesus said, with man it's impossible, but with God it's not. And so what he was saying was, you know, it's not possible for us to be righteous enough. That's up to God. Jesus was righteous enough for us. And so we have to, we have to instead of putting our faith in the things that we've earned, you know, the money we've earned, um, you know, the things we've acquired, the cars we drive, the houses we live in. Instead of, instead of putting our faith in that, what Jesus is saying, put your faith in me and I'll make sure you're taken care of and use your resources to be a blessing to others. That's what he was really saying to this man was use what you have to bless people that don't have, um, you know, and it, and it was hard for this man because he really loved his money, okay? Or what his money could buy him anyway, you know? And that's why, it was, that's why he went away sad because, it, you know, he, was, he really put his faith in his money and what he could do to earn more money. And, and, and Jesus says, no, I want you to use the money you have to bless others. Whatever you've been blessed with, you know, maybe it's not money. Maybe you can make really good apple pies. Maybe, you know, you're really good at washing cars. Maybe, you know, I, I don't know what it is that you're good at. You know, um, for me, I, 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 I love teaching people. I love teaching people what God's Word means so that they can take it and they can apply it to their lives and they can, they can follow Jesus better every day. You know, that's what God has given me as a gift to teach and uh, and so I really just I try to you know use that. Um, other people he's given great wealth you know in the world. You know you think of somebody like like uh, Donald Trump or um, his name escapes me at the moment. The guy that owns Microsoft. You know um, they have a lot of money. And just imagine if they if they knew Jesus, the things they could do. Uh, for other people with that money, you know, if they really just sold themselves out for Jesus. And so that's what Jesus was trying to say was use, use your, your wealth, whatever that looks like, whatever your wealth is, use that uh, to bless others and follow me, rely on me. And so then I want to, I want to just uh, skip over to, to um, 
a passage that really is a humbling passage, and it also shows us what this can look like for even those that seem to have absolutely nothing to offer. Okay, This is found in Mark chapter 12, uh, starting at verse 41. It says, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. Now just stop there. Imagine being the disciples and Jesus saying this, you know, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. I can just imagine them going, Jesus, what are you talking about? This woman put in two, you know, copper coins worth a cent or two. You know, I can just imagine them being so confused. Jesus, what are you talking about? This woman has given nothing compared to all of these other people. But I want you to watch, uh, listen to what Jesus says. They, this is verse 44, they, the rich people, all gave out of their wealth. But she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Do you see the difference? You know, it's really easy. If I was a millionaire, you know, and I wish I was, of course, everybody wishes that. But if I was a millionaire, it'd be really easy for me to give a lot of money to the church. It would be so easy. It wouldn't even, you know, Donald Trump could give our church a million dollars tomorrow and um, he wouldn't even have to, you know, it wouldn't even be a thought. He wouldn't even miss it, you know, because he has so much money. And that's what these people were doing. These people that were putting in money, um, they had so much money that, that it, it, they weren't missing it when they put it in. And in fact, I, I really believe that the, those people that were putting in money out of their wealth were doing it uh, to make themselves look good, you know. But this woman, she gave, you know, Jesus tells us, uh, she gave everything she had. She gave the very last two copper coins that she had and put them in to the treasury at the temple. And that is powerful. That is so powerful. Because she, what she did, what she really did, okay, is she said, you know what, God... I don't have much, but everything I have, I'm giving to you, and I am now going to trust you to take care of me. She was putting her complete faith and trust in God. And I often wonder, you know, um, you know, do we do that? Do we put? Do we really put our complete faith in God, or do we? Give of him out of the comfort of our excess. You know, and I don't mean just money, you know. You know, maybe... Well, I'll just say, I'll just get real with you. Sometimes, uh, because I, you know, I have a family, a couple kids, you know, uh, I have a lot of interests, a lot of things I like to do, I like to read, um... You know, I like to fish, I like to hunt. There's a lot of things I like to do. Sometimes I find myself giving my time to people when I have an excess of time, if you get what I'm saying. Instead of, you know, you know that last hour of the day, that, that that's all I have for myself to sort of de-stress and unwind and recharge my batteries, you know, do I give that, you know? Do I always faithfully give the very last of what I have to somebody that needs it? And sometimes the answer is no. Um, you know, and I think we, we can all say that. We can all admit that sometimes we don't give of ourselves um, when we have nothing left to give. We give when we have a, an, an excess of money, of time, you know, of energy, 
of whatever. But Jesus is saying, I want you to, I want you to give out of your poverty. I want you to give when it really is hard to give. When you know that what you're giving is the last of what you have and you're not sure where you're going to get your next meal, your next, you know, paycheck, whatever. And, and I, you know, and so, you know, as far as the myth that, that, that we have to tithe, I'm, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to wrap up. You know, tithing is a great place to start. You know, giving 10% or, or 5%, you know, wherever, um, you know, wherever you feel like you can step out of your comfort zone a little bit, you know, to get your feet wet, you know, start there. You know, if it's 5%, 10%, whatever. Um, and by the way, that doesn't mean money. You know, so there are people in our church that tithe in other ways. They give, you know, they uh, one person may buy uh, the coffee for the church. Somebody else might, you know, buy food for the church. You know, whatever. There's other ways to give to the church than just money because the church has a lot of different, you know, expenditures so but but you start somewhere where you get stretched a little bit you know you get out of your comfort zone but don't stay there is what i'm saying you know 10 percent can be a good starting point um but it doesn't mean that that's where we stop you know rick warren who pastors a church out in southern california he wrote the purpose driven life a lot of you probably know who he is he gives 90 percent of his salary back to the church. I mean, can you imagine that? That's a, that's a lot of money, you know? And so, you know, f for some of us, 10% is not enough. That's what I'm saying. For some people, 10% is easy. 10% costs you nothing. But here's the flip side of it. For some people, 10% is too much. 10% would be you know, would just be so, so outside of their comfort zone that they couldn't even work up the courage to do it. So maybe, you know, 5% or 3% or a percent, you know, whatever. But if it costs you something, that's what's important. Does it cost you something? Does, does what I'm giving, is it hard for me to do? Is it hard for me... To, to let go of that, to release that to the church, knowing that I'm not sure how I'm going to make ends meet because I just gave to God. You know, that's where we need to be in that place where when we are giving, when we are giving to God, it stretches us, it costs us something, it makes us a little bit uncomfortable, and it causes us to have to say, God... I'm giving this because I believe that you want me to and I'm going to be faithful to you. But I've got to tell you, God, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. So you're, you're going to have to take care of me. That's what God desires. It's really not about the money. It's really about us relying on Him for our needs instead of relying on our own abilities to fulfill our needs. That's what God wants. He wants people that are just leaning into him saying, God, God, I need you to take care of me. God, I need you to take care of me because I can't take care of myself. And so, you know, let's let's try to, to forget about this myth that we have to give a tithe, a 10%. It's not about 10%. We're not required to give anything except that which costs us something, you know. And as I said, that's not necessarily money. You know, for some of you listening, it might simply be that God has been stirring you to step out in faith to, to do something. I don't know what it is, you know. For the, I'll, just, I'll just get a little personal again, uh, and then I'll wrap up. Um, for me, my whole life... From the time I knew Jesus at 14 years old as my Savior until about four to five years ago when, when Sarah and I started coming to Harvest Family Fellowship and we met Harry, you know, there was a day where Harry 
my wife and I all at the same time heard God say that I was called to be a pastor, you know, and that was confirmation. But for the for the previous, you know, 10 to, to 15 years of my life, God had been trying to tell me that. He had been trying to say, Michael, you're going to be a pastor. I want you to be a pastor. I want you to teach people. I want you to love people. I want you to shepherd people into my presence. But I didn't want to hear it because it cost me something. It it was I knew that I knew what pastors did. I knew that they worked long hours. I knew that they that they dealt with, you know, people that had really serious problems, you know, addictions, you know, um, you know, mental disorders, anxiety, depression, you know, pastors do a lot more than just preach on Sunday. And I knew that I knew that it was going to, that I was going to have to give up a lot of my time and I didn't want to, but I'm going to tell you this, when he finally got a hold of me and I said, okay, God, I'll, I'll do what you ask. It's the most rewarding thing in the world for me. To spend time when I can when I can put time into somebody's life, and then I can see how God starts to heal the hurt in their heart or the addiction that they face, you know, or whatever it is in their life that they've come to me for help with. It's the most rewarding thing to see God work in their lives, to give them peace. And so what I'm telling you is Find that thing in your life that's hard, that, 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 that requires you to give up something that's hard to give up. You know, maybe it is about your finances, or maybe it's about, you know, something else. Maybe it's about your time. Maybe it's about your comfort. You know, maybe it's just God saying, you know, I don't require you to do to give a lot of time or money but I what I require you is you know from time to time to step out in faith and powerfully just pray for somebody you know and you're going to feel uncomfortable you know because people are going to notice you maybe it's that I don't know but God is asking us to give something that costs us something and so I would just encourage you figure out what that is whatever it is that God is 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 asking you to give and pray that he you say God give me the strength to act in faith upon what it is you would have me do even though it makes me uncomfortable even though it makes me scared even though I don't know how I'm gonna pay my bills etc etc you know and I guarantee you I promise you that if you if you ask him for the strength he, he's going to give it to you um, he's given it to me you know and he will give it to you so I hope that tonight um, that we've come to understand that, that, you know, tithing is not a requirement in the New Covenant. It's simply a guideline where we can maybe start, you know, or aspire to, or, or whatever. Um, so one, one more thing, and I'll, I'll say good evening. Um, please don't, don't let anybody make you feel guilty if you, if you don't give a tithe to your church, you know, there's no guilt, you know, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. So you shouldn't feel guilty if you aren't able to give a tithe, you know, now, you know, you may feel convicted if you don't think you're giving enough, but don't ever feel guilty. Don't ever let anybody, you know, make you, and, and I, 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 um, from the bottom of my heart, apologize if some Christian has ever made you feel guilty uh, about not giving a tithe, uh, because that's not what God, you know, desires from you. Um, and so I hope that everyone has a really great weekend. Um, and I hope to see some of you on Sunday at church. Um, and so I hope this has been a blessing to you all. Uh, I love you all and, and, and God bless.